or something that you would want someone to know before going in? Change is not bad. I, you know, a lot of uh, people will like, well, this is the way it is now. I'm like, but we're redoing it. It doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes people can limit themselves. You know, yeah, you change. go to that fridge, it's here. You go yeah. to this over here, this is this is where I got my Cheez-Its. And this right? is where I it's get my... It's muscle memory, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, damn, I got to go to the left instead of the right now to get that box of Cheez-Its. Yeah. That freaks people out. What does it mean to plant your flag? It means you're not afraid. It means you're passionate about what you do. It means you're here to serve others. In business, in life, in good and bad. You aren't afraid to fly your colors proudly because you know you serve, serve a greater, greater purpose. purpose. This is the Plant Your Flag podcast with Mike Bean and Jeremy Mountain. Hello and welcome back to the Plant Your Flag podcast. I'm Jeremy Mountain, your host with Bean Media, and we have a new guest today, Jim Blandowski, co-owner of Creative Kitchens and Baths, formerly Kitchen Creations. Uh, they just opened up another location in Amherst at 4997 Harlem Road, and they have their original location in Hamburg at 5470 Camp Road. So we're super excited to have Jim here today. He's a co-owner. Uh, Mike, the owner of Bean Media, it goes way back with Steve, the other co-owner, uh, all the way back to Boy Scouts. And as Jim mentioned, uh, he is the face of the company, and Steve is the brains of the company. Is that how it went? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so we're excited to have you here, Jim, because you were uh, courageous enough to step on, so we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Good awesome. to be here. Awesome. Uh, as you know, if you've watched before or listened before, the whole thing here with Plant Your Flag is we, we just want to talk to business owners and people out there that were not afraid to plant their own flag in the ground and sort of make this world a better place, which appears to be more and more difficult. Uh, but... To get right into it, uh, we sort of like to start off each episode with, you know, what or who inspired you to plant your flag? Got to give, uh, got to give Steve, Steve, the heads up on that one there. Um, opportunity is really the inspiration, I guess. You know, the idea of the want was always there to have my own place, and then I get a get a phone call from you know a a connection from. You know, seems like lives ago, you know, many lives ago and comes back around. So jump right in and say, yeah, let's do it, man. So long term friendships. Yeah. And you were telling me a little bit before about how you got to know Steve. But uh, can you let the audience know how that because you had mentioned like you never you, you never burn a bridge because you never know yeah. how how that could come back and help. Yeah, I worked with Steve for about a year at a box store back in 2009. He was uh, one of my he was my assistant manager and uh got into some fantasy football leagues with him at the time. So after he left and I, I stayed at that place for, for a while, we always stayed in connection through that. And then, uh, you know, we go separate, separate ways. And 15 years later, you know, life comes back around and he's looking for a business partner. So he reaches out and here we are now today. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. And it's a little bit different than some of our other guests have their story has been so far. Um, as far as you yourself, you know, where, where do you hail from? Are you from Western New York? Yeah, I'm a, a Lackawanna guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Lackawanna was, it's, it's very, uh, multi-cultured, you know, so you learn how to be around and deal with a lot of different walks of life and people that come from all over the world, really, yeah. you know, so, which is great in a, in a customer service type industry, you know, you learn how to, how to read people and. You know, I always, I always tell people, people buy people, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm selling kitchens, you know, I'm selling myself is what I'm doing here. So yeah. coming from a, coming from a place there that, that allows you to learn how to read people and stuff like that can really carry you quite a bit. In the I actually like lost this. to Lackawanna in, in the sectional championship in football back in 06, 07. Really? Myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Paul Mueller, one of my best friends there, star uh, quarterback for Lackawanna. Well, there was, <laughs> uh, that might've been... The year prior to me, because Capone Smith, Capone, okay, yeah, yeah, and that was Curtis awesome. Underwood. Yep. So we'll yeah. talk about that yeah, after yeah, we yeah. get off. <laughs> I didn't know you were from there. They ended yeah. my they ended my high school career okay. over there. Them boys. Well, but, I saw them do that. Then I was at the game. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Nice. But um, as far as like, you know, owning a business or being a business owner, what did you ever consider it before like when you were growing up was it something that you envisioned or you know how did that sort of come up come about the, the dream was always there 
Um, the reality of it was I always knew I was going to need a partner, somebody, you know, strong to kind of help get me to that point. And, um, you know, lucky enough for it to honestly feels like it just kind of fell out of the sky with, you know, Steve called me up and boom, there, there it was. But the idea was something I always wanted to do just because you always want to, you know, the ability to do things your way and to, especially like in the customer service industry, being able to service the people the way you feel is the best way, not have to go off of, you know, somebody else's protocols of how, right. how you handle stuff. So just being able to do it your way without having to answer to somebody was, was a big, big driver for me there. That's honestly like, I'm, I'm not necessarily a, a, an owner here at being media, but I've always sort of approached it trying to learn as much as I can to help Mike, you know, be a better owner, be a better business. And when I first walked in to our old office, I had said to Mike, like, this is like, if, if I spent 15 years trying to build something, this is where I would get. So like, I always looked at it, like, like you said, I've, I'm still with being media because of the fact that it is us and there is no like overlord sort yep. of just create, like we get to sort of create our own way. And I yep. think that's like some of the coolest part of owning a business and why we started this podcast is just that, like not, being afraid of not having a boss, so to speak. Right. Yeah. That's why, like, we call it a team. You know, every everybody's part of the team here. Like, it's all it's one vision. It's collaborative. I want everybody to be themselves and to not be afraid because when people aren't, that's when they can be the best version of themselves, and that's when you're going to get the most out of your people, and they're going to give most to you know to your to your clients. Totally. Totally. And like, do you feel you had mentioned like working for like. Uh, you know, a big box store and some of the other, uh, you know, companies around in Western New York, how do you feel working in those arenas maybe helped you be a better communicator or leader, like in the position that you are now? The, uh, so the box store is, you know, there's, there's corporate above. So everything is, you know, you're in a box and you just, you have to stick to that. I think that's kind of where I first got the idea of like, you know, I, I want to do it my way. Yeah. Kind of thing. What would it be like to not have to do it this way? <laughs> right. Exactly. And then, uh, so then when I leave there and then I go to another small business, you know, to a, to a showroom design place that like there you get the freedom to kind of, it's almost like you're, you're your own little business under a bigger umbrella, you know, mm. because they give you so much freedom to do that and, and really embrace that. And, you know, but there's still ways that they're going to have their corks and ways of how they do it as, as we do, you know, creative right. kitchens and baths. Um, so that, that's really the big driver is just be able to, to, to plant your flag and do it the way you want to do it. Do you, do you find like what sort of challenges on the opposite end of that, knowing that ultimately that is the goal I've obviously experienced, you know, being close to it here, like some of the dark side or like challenges that come with not having that corporate structure uh, to sort of fall back on, even though it can be somewhat of a pain in the ass. You know, what, what have you learned, you know, over the, over the couple of years sort of being in, in more of a control seat, you know, what sort of things have you taken away where that is like absent, you know, that, that structure, that corporate kind of overlord, as I call it sometimes. Yeah. Um, just in, in, embracing people to be themselves. Um, again, it just, it gives them the best version of themselves. And I feel like I came from places where it was like, here's how we do it. You're going to do it my way. And it's like, they take the, your, your personality almost kind of gets taken away from yeah. that a little bit. And especially design and everything like that, there's, there's a lot of personality that goes into it. You know, everybody's gonna, I always give an example of when somebody walks into my showroom, depending on whether they get me or Steve or another designer on my team, you're going to get you like, it's a guarantee. You're going to get a different kitchen layout, right? you know, right. from each one. And the beauty of it to me is every one of them can be, is, can be correct. You right. know, it's not a right and wrong thing. So, so to put people into a box, it's almost like it's, it's too rigid for me. You yeah. know, I, I like open and expressiveness and creativity. And I would think that that would create a better solution ultimately for a client and, and, and a customer. Um, well, as far as like you personally, what types of qualities do you think that you have that sort of help you get from point A to point B in terms of an employee to now a leader and or co-owner? 
I, I, it's, it's, it sounds so simple. It took me a while to appreciate under the fact of how much just the ability to do your job, like how far that can really take you. You know, like people tell, like if you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it, you know, and if you have a timeline to meet, meet the timeline and just do your job, you know, and, and not just bare minimum. You don't have to go above and beyond every single time. But if you are just doing things the right way and you're applying yourself and you're, you know, giving an honest effort, I'm, I'm a karma guy. You know, I feel like that stuff's going to come back around and you're going to be rewarded for it. Totally. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think like that was something that working in some of the corporate structures that I worked in, it was like, why are we making things more difficult? And that's why I sort of like the the freewheeling, though it becomes a responsibility to sort of create some of those systems and, and structure to ensure that you are doing the job in maybe the most seamless way possible, but also not making it more complicated. And right. I find we, that we got to have process and procedure to keep everybody, you know, on a, on a, on a narrow, you know, straight path here. But common sense has to apply at yeah. times too, where like, yes, this is, this is our procedure, but there's always exceptions to every rule. So recognizing when you got to, you know, kind of, kind of go a little off the beaten path there to, to get to where you got to get to, be it to solve a problem or to get to the right kitchen design, like just figure it out and just be open-ended always, just always be open, open-minded. Yeah. I think that's a great sort of like you said, it really is that simple sometimes. And I find that there's a lot of communication that occurs that it seems like the older I get, there seems like there's a lot of communication that occurs just as for the sake of there being communication instead of the communication being for a purpose to get something across the goal line, so to speak. When we started, it was just Steve and I. And our first hire was Cindy, who's my project coordinator. Before we brought on another design or anything like that, it was like, I need somebody to coordinate everything for communication, you know, to make sure everything's going, going how it needs to go. And that communication just cannot be understated. Yeah, especially I'm sure with people making such a big commitment, not only like in choosing who's going to design that kitchen or bath of theirs, but who they're going to take that chunk of change yeah. <laughs> and hand out to. It's absolutely. not exactly like just a pair of sneakers or something. Absolutely. You know, it's you know, people are spending tens of thousands of dollars and be it a, a kitchen, a car, a house, uh, you know, whatever it is you're buying in life, you're spending, you know, money like that. There's, there's stresses that come along with spending money like that, regardless of what it is you're buying. So that's what I always tell people. I'm like, people, people buy people, you know, I, I truly believe I'm like, I don't, I don't sell kitchens. I don't sell baths. I sell myself. Yeah. You walk into my showroom, you already want a kitchen. It's not my job to convince you to buy right. a kitchen. I'm not cold. That's why they came in. I'm not cold calling you to say, hey, here's some insurance policy you never heard of and why you need it in your life. The idea of the kitchen's already there. I'm selling myself. So you're getting it from me instead of the next person. Yeah. And I would assume that trust is, that seems to be a theme, like regardless of industry something that I've recognized from working in marketing for a lot of different companies. And then also on this, this podcast, just sort of asking people about, you know, successfully closing or, you know, getting the business that keeps the business afloat. You know, what do you feel about, you know, how do you, how do you help someone trust you with such a big commitment? Listen to them, you know, like they're, they're telling you what they want. You know, and just you're going to give them your professional opinion, you know, when you need to. Uh, but for the most part, if you if you listen to your people, it kind of goes back when I first said, like reading people and just like the ability to like identify their wants and their needs. And if you can check those boxes as many, you know, it's about checking more boxes than the next person. Mm -hmm. And if you do that and you're attentive and you make it about them. You know, the, the kitchen and the cabinetry and the countertops and everything else that's going to go into it, that's going to come along the way. But let's make this about you and then we'll figure out your kitchen. But you're going to we're going to figure out the person first. And if you make it about them, then they're going to be more apt to trust you. Yeah, because you're 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 there's genuine um, 
there's a genuine want to to help this person achieve the goals you know people there's something a lot like they call it a dream kitchen like you know it sounds a little like cheeky at times but like i i take it like serious it's like i'm making those dreams a reality for people like that's a big like responsibility to me you know i take that serious yeah it's kind of like almost like inception like they walk in with a vision and you take that vision and execute it so as far as like that design process uh, i wanted to get into a little bit about uh the company and just sort of its origins but while we're on it you know in that customer relationship because obviously we do some of your marketing for you. So this is going to be helpful information as, as I seek to find people to come in to, to meet with you. Um, during that design process, how often do you have to sort of, like are there, are there levels to that dream that you have to sort of create for them when it comes to budget? You know, do they, when they walk in and they have an idea, how, how important is budget? Because I know I've spoken a little bit with Steve and there's levels to some of the products and things like that, that he, he had mentioned, like, we can give you that kitchen. It just may be a little bit different, you know, than they first walked in. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I always make like a comparison. So the, the kitchen industry is very much known, not unknown to the general public. And I understand. I appreciate that fact. I always tell people if I'm selling you a car and I say, here's a Ford and here's a Ferrari, the general public understands that the Ferrari is going to cost more. They may not know the difference in the horsepower or the this or that between the two, but they generally understand that difference. Most people come into my showroom and if I say, here's candlelight cabinetry, here's my medallion cabinetry, here's my 1951 cabinetry, don't mean a damn thing to most people. So it's right. like, it's on me to, to educate them on that. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's identifying. I tell people price knowledge and product knowledge are very, because people come in and they're like, what's a kitchen cost? Yeah. You know, 20,000, well, 40,000, yeah. 60,000. I always tell them, yes. <laughs> you, you know, like, it's Ex like, it's exactly. You walk into a car dealership and you'd say, well, how much does a car cost? Yeah. It, it, you know, there's, there's, there's different levels to it. Right. You know, so it's identifying those levels because some people, some people, some people do the dream one time, you know, right. and it's, you identify, okay, how long are you going to be in this house? Is this your forever home? If it is, like, let's, let's, let's start at the top. And then if we have to peel back from there, we can. But like, if let's do it once, right? I I, I saw a uh, the the other showroom that I worked at in the past. Like my first day, I walked in. They had a sign on one of their displays that said, "When you buy quality, you only cry once." <laughs> and that like always stuck with me. So it's like if you're gonna do your forever kitchen, like get the really good stuff. You know, go for it. And if it's you know, maybe if you're it's a starter home, you know, younger couple, you know, they're they're doing everything just to get the down payment on that house you know and then they'll, they'll you know down the down the road you know we'll get around to doing cabinets right. or something like then they get to that point and it's like you know they're they obviously they're they're trying to make it work with what they got so you identify that budget and then you show them here's what we can do for you know for that budget yeah yeah that's really interesting do you find that people are often surprised by what you can do with a budget are they sort of like do i mean i'm sure now i'm sure for some individuals budget is not an issue before people that obviously times economy wise is is sort of tight the last couple of years do you find that people often overestimate what their budget needed to be i don't think people know what their budget right. needs to be right. a lot of times and then it's a matter of whether they're sticker shocked or not or like they probably have they have some rough idea of what they're what they're yeah. generally thinking cuz somebody they know has done something similar yeah it's tough to get like it's a it could be a tough conversation sometimes. Like I was struggling. Yeah. Like when when do you have the budget conversation right. with people? Part of me wants to do it right off the bat because it's it's good data yeah. for me. I could say, you know, if you got a budget of twenty thousand versus fifty thousand, well, I know we're not even gonna go look at these cabinets, you know. Right. We're, we're gonna stay over here because that's gonna be most effective. But uh, a lot of people will either one be like, Okay, you're leading with money, it's all about the money. So like I don't wanna ever like give that impression to right. people. Um, and then I think you get people too that they, that sometimes they're like, well, if you give them a budget that I'm going to max out their budget or, right. you know, and it's like, it's just, it's all about, it's just good information gathering, right. um, to have that budget because it's a more effective process because I, I, we're, we're all so busy. We're all going a million miles and places every day. Right. So I don't want to 
take your time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a process. You know, when people come in, you know, we're, we're doing, I'm going out to your house and I'm doing a measure and then coming back and then you're going to come back again into the showroom and we're going to review, you know, however many design layout options we might come up with. And then um, I'll make any changes. Then I'm going to show you the different cabinet lines and door styles and all this stuff. And then you're going to leave and then I'm going to work on the quoting and then I'm going to have you come back in and then we're going to review pricing. So we're already a few hours in on this, you know, and so we all got a lot to do. So the last thing I want to do is go through that entire process just for me to show you a price and be like, yeah, I, that's 20 grand more than I got to spend. Exactly. You know, so you yeah. want to be efficient for them too, respecting their time and lifestyles and everything else that's going on too. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense sort of switching gears a little bit from like some of the customer facing stuff and going a little bit into like the the origin of you know the flag being planted for creative kitchens and baths um if you could shed a little light for myself and the audience i know a little bit more than they do obviously about how the company started but um you know how how did this particular company start I got three dates. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 most direct one is twenty late twenty twenty. Um, I get a phone call from Steve, who was working at then Kitchen Creations. Um, that actually, so to start that, Steve takes this job first time in the industry and calls me up and um, asks me if I was still doing cabinet design. So. Uh, we did a lunch just so he could kind of pick my brain, give him some contact info, different things like that. And then uh, probably about eight months later or so, I get a uh, get a phone call from him, and he told me that unfortunately one of the uh, it was a husband and wife, Madeline and Mel Brown, that had owned uh, Kitchen Creations, and and Mel had passed away late in 2020, and Madeline was in her mid 70s, I think, at that point, so she had like one foot towards towards retirement as it was. So she asked Steve if he was interested in in purchasing. So he he called me up and. Asked me want to partner up, so um, here we are. You know, as far as that goes, so that's twenty one. That was the Hamburg location. Yep, that's Hamburg. So Madeline and Mel opened that up in two thousand seven. Okay. So they were there for thirteen years before we bought them, and then uh, two years into Kitchen Creations, uh, we had got wind of uh, Creative Kitchens and Baths. Uh, then owner Bill Strong looking to. Um, he wanted to retire. So Steve and I had always had an idea of multiple locations, um, especially in this industry, like no other places around here really are multiple locations. So that was always like a niche mm. that we kind of identified that thought would kind of help, help us, uh, you know, stand out and be, yeah. be different than the competition. So, um, so two years in, we get this idea, we get wind of this. So we're like, let's go through the process did not have any expectations really of a go. We figured five, 10 year plan, like two years, you know, it was, it was a little soon we thought, but we're like, let's go through the process. So we know what we need to know, you yeah. know? So when the opportunity really does come around, like we've, we, we got an idea of what, what we're, what we're looking at. And we just kept going and going and going. And at one point we looked at each other, we're like, I guess this is happening. So, uh, that's awesome. So, so here we are. So that was, so creative kitchens, uh, was, Oh, was founded in 2000, or I'm sorry, in 1985 by Bill Strong. So, and that one's in Amherst. Uh, that the Amherst location. On Harlem. Yeah. So, uh, so now we're Creative Kitchens and Bath, established 1985. That's awesome. And, and how, you know, how did that process go? Like, not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but when you, when did you guys have a relationship with, with that guy before? No, no, it was. So, like, was he take, was he sort of like taking, like suitors and and he did like I guess you would almost have to win him over to be the one to take it over. So it was a, a mutual vendor that that we had got wind that he was interested in, and it was funny. So my my rep, I'm on the I'm in the back of of the showroom with with my rep, and at the same time, unknowingly, Steve is on the phone with the owner of the same place, and I come walking out and I go, I just got an interesting phone call. He goes, Me too. <laughs> so. By now we're having the same conversation, so it was, it was pretty pretty wild there. So, uh, so so that's how we we first got wind of it, and um, that was a whirlwind process of of going through it, and um, it 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 it, it kind of came and went once or twice on us, and um, deal fell through, and it, it came back on us, and I was like, okay, man, it's it's meant to be, and it the first time it 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 kind of fell apart. We were, our target date was going to be 
um, December of that year to, to kind of have everything. So we do the Hamburg, uh, the home show at the Hamburg fairgrounds. Mm. And that's in, that's the third week of February. And that's like a big takeoff for us. That's a really heavy, uh, selling season right. for the industry. So we're like running around like crazy from that point. So this closes the first week of March. So like yeah. after it came back around. So we're like, okay, now we're really like, we were nuts. We yeah. were nuts. So like we're trying to onboard and get these two different businesses to talk to each other and get everything while like being in like the thick of like a selling season. So yeah, it was, it was, it was quite the emotional process. So there for... swimming, <laughs> swimming in the middle of the ocean. And with... of course, you know, you get attorneys and everything. It's not a quick process, right. you know? So yeah. that's, that's a good, I don't know, eight, 10, 12 month kind of whirlwind. Yeah. That'll put some gray hairs on your head. I feel like that sounds a little bit scary. How do you feel like, obviously the last couple of years, it sounds like it's moved pretty swiftly, but it's not like it's been 20 years, but it sounds like it could feel like about 20 years. How do you feel you've like evolved or changed from, you know, like we said before, an employee to now someone who owns a two location business in Western New York and is growing, you know, pretty swiftly. Yeah. You go from wearing one hat to many hats. You know, when I was at the, uh, the other showroom, it's just like sell, sell, sell. You know, that's the only, that's the only thing I'm worried about, but now I'm, you know, still selling, but before here or before this, I'm out doing deliveries this morning, you know, and then you're, you're training and onboarding and hiring and doing all this other stuff for your teams and everything like that. And, um, Steve and I do quite a bit of the like remodeling stuff like that in the showroom. So you're always changing displays and trying in, to, inside to the stay. actual yeah. showroom. So you're not 20 years behind. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So it's, there's a lot of different, uh, lot, like you're at a lot of places at once, you know, so learning to, to manage, manage that, you know, to be, to be in multiple places at the same time, it feels like a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Honestly, it, it and this that's why this is so sort of rewarding for for myself just like in the marketing world to be able to work with people like you and Steve and and hear these stories cuz like once again that's kind of the whole point of this podcast is those who are not afraid to plant their flag and like I just love hearing these stories cuz it's like it's just interesting and I I I really appreciate you coming in. Um as as we kind of like keep moving forward here, what is it that you love most about what you do? It's different every day. I I'm the type I need to be like re-stimulated. I yeah. can't, I can't do same the here. same thing. Like I got to get up and go and do, and every kitchen's different. Yeah. You know, every client's different. So it's, it's, it's always fresh, you know, it's always new, new challenges and obstacles and, and, and problem solving and, and design work and, and, learning different people so i like i like I, like i said i need to be re-stimulated i can't um uh, you know steve and i, I him and i we I, I say it all the time we're like opposite strengths like he can he could sit down at his desk and you know he'll he'll just go and go and go and he can go for 12 hours straight and me i'm like i'm mean, after an hour i'm like okay i'm looking around I'm like okay what can i do to find to distract myself because i can't just sit here and go and do you know so yeah. so that that stimulation is is is, a, is good for me uh who after a few years sort of in this world, who is it that sort of helps you the most to sort of keep it moving forward and keep that flag like flying and planted? Steve. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's that guy has done so much for me personally, you know, so to that, you know, I do everything I can to kind of honor this, this partnership, That's you awesome. know, and, and keep it, keep it plugging along. Cause like I said, the, the idea and the want, you know, to, to do what I'm currently doing has been there for, for years, you know, and he, he, he really is the one who, who made it, you know, made it happen for me and really gave that opportunity to plant that flag. That's awesome. What advice would you have for someone, you know, out there who maybe in, in a similar place that you were at one point and, and, you know, sort of clocking in, clocking out employee, but having somewhat of a vision, having somewhat of maybe an idea or something out there, uh, you know, what would you say to them in terms of advice or guidance on, you know, maybe making that dream more of a reality? Shoot your shot. 
you know, when the, when the opportunity comes up, take it. When, when Steve calls me there, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in the thick of the pandemic. And I'm like, you know what, the world's upside down right now. I'm like, what the hell? Why not? I'm like, if, you know, if, if it's a flash in the plant pan or we crash and burn, I'm like, I we get another design job somewhere else. You know, it's just like, don't, don't be, don't make fear-based decisions in life. Like you got the opportunity, you know, take it, shoot your shot, see what happens, you know? And, and if not, it, it, you end up somewhere else, guess what? You, you, you learn some really good stuff along the way, whether you know it or not, that's going to carry you in whatever's next. So you're always learning, evolving and changing and just, you know, go for it. And, you know, maybe some people are more, uh, process driven, you know, to, to handle and like, you know, maybe go in and file in for, uh, you know, a name or do all the other, you know, the, the, the real businessy stuff that goes along with it yeah. that I was, I would say fortunate to not have to well, yeah, do that, as much of, but that's the, the creative left brain of me just wants to, you know, I just, I just want to make things look pretty and sell them, <laughs> yeah. you know? So like, that's, that's what I get to do. I think things. that's something that I've taken out of it too, is that, that idea of partnership and, and having someone that you need almost like not almost like the old spy versus spy in a uh, mad magazine where there was like two matching guys, but like, like you said, like left brain and, and sort of how you guys are almost like dueling personalities, but forging for the same goal. And that's something that, you know, I've noticed working with some people that that don't have that co-partner yeah. that, or that that second person to sort of bounce ideas off of and i could find I, I would i would think it would be challenging to to do it alone and something i've taken out of this today is just the power of that partnership and and that trust and what can come out of it when those opportunities are presented and, and like you weren't afraid to take that chance but like where would he be if you said no that day right yeah or like it would take like a guy like Mike. Like I have so much respect for a guy like Mike to like do it because right, Mike's he's sole owner. He's oh like, yeah, right. So to like to do it on your own like that, like yeah, that that to me is a whole nother level. That I I I say I'm fortunate enough to be like naive to the back end stuff of it. That is that's honestly those are a lot of the stresses and stuff like that you don't handle and that. So like, um, you know that partnership is is it's it's invaluable to me and you know as much as i say like opposite strengths and stuff like that but the key too is the values and the vision ha are are 100 percent aligned you yeah. know and they always have been like the way we approach um we him and i both always call it like servant leadership like for our team like we're here to like tell me how i can you know, make you the best version of yourself. You know, I'm not here to tell you, you know, you got to do this. You got to do that. It's like, what do you need of me to make you, you know, go to that next level? Yeah. So having, being aligned and the day-to-day -day stuff allows those opposite strengths to, to shine. I totally. Guess, you know? Yeah, totally. And that's, yeah, like I was, I was sort of saying before, that's, that was what sort of committed me to helping Mike grow this company and sort of give him some more support and some more backing and some more just alignment like you mentioned in in forming something greater than maybe he had envisioned and giving him that confidence and that's what I've sort of always tried to do for him and and I like to think that obviously that's helped him along the way because I've been able to see you know our company grow over the years and 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 grow bigger relationships with some of our clients than when I first started and that's why I love sort of working in this space. Um, as far as uh, creative kitchens and baths, what do you guys do differently uh, than other companies do you feel that sort of separate yourselves? Because you've obviously worked in different l levels of it. So, right. you know, how do you guys sort of aim to differ or, or be better than? Really? I, that's right. I go back to that whole, you know, selling myself and, and being attentive and really listening to them and, you know, I'm not here to tell you what you have to do. You tell me what you want to do and I'm going to do, you know, we, we're going to do what we can to, to, to best make that, that become a reality. Um, you know, I think it's, um, you know, personality types and different things like that of like, we, 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 I like to have an eclectic team of different people because, you know, certain people get along better with other people in, right. in, the, in the world, you know? And, and, and so when you can, um, when you, when you can have a team that full, they, everybody embraces that, um, 
I think that can be something that I think the team effort that that that's probably where I would really land on this is is doing it as a team. Um, I I've worked with with designers in the past that it's uh, I'll say ego, you know, where it's like uh, you know this is the way you know we're gonna do it type of thing. And for me, I'm like, no, that's not how it's got to be. You know, it's like let's all two brains are better than one. You know, they say it all the time for a reason, right? right? So it's like, let's collectively all figure this out together. And I think that team approach to what could be looked at as like an individualized type of um, process, you know, because like you're their direct connect, you know, when, when somebody's, I design a kitchen for somebody, they're not calling Steve to ask questions about that kitchen, you know? Um, so it's, it, it, it's, they're, they're, they're going right back to you, but let's all, Especially like on the back, and when they're not around, that's when you're when we're all like really collaborative, collaborative and stuff like that together. Yeah, and what like if there was one thing that you've seen in your experience um, that would be somewhat of like an issue or a pitfall when someone is trying to redo their kitchen and taking that step, what would you say the the most avoidable issue or something that you would want someone to know before going in? Change is not bad. I, you know, a lot of uh, people will like, well, this is the way it is now. I'm like, we're redoing it. It doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes people can limit themselves because, right, we're creatures of habit. You know, we don't like change. You know? Yeah, you change. go to that fridge, it's here. You go yeah. to this over here, this is this is where I got my Cheez-Its. And this right. is where I get it's my... It's muscle memory, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, damn, I got to go to the left instead of the right now to get that box of Cheez-Its. Yeah. That freaks people out. I could see, like, some of the jobs I've seen you guys do is truly incredible where it's like it's almost like a different room. It's not yeah. only like different cabinets or di it's like a completely different universe. <laughs> yeah. You have your like, two, I always call it like there's the pull and replace jobs where it's like the layout stays the same. And it's just like, you know, you're changing from like a oak cabinet to like a painted white cabinet or something like that. But like the muscle memory and all that, that still all stays the same, you know, it's just a different look. But when people start taking down walls and you're you're tra retransforming, you know the whole space there, like Inception, that's, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. like Inception. Those, those are the fun ones because that's like when you get the real transformation of space, and like they walk in, you see it at the end, it's like this is the same room. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. And the island thing seems to be like, I feel like a lot of these kitchens, like everyone wants an island. Is that kind of like I love them? Yeah, I love them. It's it's the gathering place. Like, you know, everybody hears that line and it's like, it's because it's true. Yeah. It's true, man. Like, there, well, you get these kitchens sometimes, like if the room's like a little bit narrower and like you can't fit the island in there or at least not the way they, they want it. That's like the biggest one where people like feel like crushed. Like, yeah. oh, you know, there's different ways you can, you can, you know, get creative, you know, when you can on different stuff. But if there's, if there, that lack of island and if it's like a want, that, that one's tough for people. Yeah. I've seen like in some of the jobs you guys done, there's like so many different types of them. I saw one that had a little kid's uh, high chair pulled right up to it. And I, I never had one. We had just regular old kitchen table growing up, but like, and then the dining room, but like I could see my parents like knocking this one wall down and putting an Island there because it just sort of opens up the room, but you still can convene there and have breakfast or check your right. phone or whatever. I want to do one of those ones. You ever see like on Instagram, like those, People like they'll open up like a cabinet door and there's like a slide like going down to the basement <laughs> yeah. type thing. It's like these like yeah. hidden rooms and Just stuff like door. that's what I want to do. I'm like that's like some of the fun. It's cool when you get like some of that oddball stuff like that that comes yeah. out. I've never done a never done a, a slide. Done some ladder systems, but never a slide. I saw some of those pictures. It was almost like uh like a library yeah. or something, like one yeah. of those old libraries. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. Got uh got that job from a from a lawn sign. When my contractors had a lawn sign up and they called me up and uh, so I walk out to this house. He's got ceilings, 13 foot four ceilings. And I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? The woman was a, uh, she, like a couple years out of high school, she was a, uh, she was doing like, she was engineering for a little bit. So she comes in, she basically had most of that design done. And it was like all on graph paper. So like I was just kind of plugging in and then just doing like finished selections. What she really needed me to figure out most for her were like the wall cabinets for the ladder system, yeah. which was ironic because typically like when I'm designing, I kind of figure out the lower stuff. And then a lot of times the walls just kind of like fill in. It's like you fill in the blank type of stuff, right. you know. So to spend a whole day just designing wall cabinets was like something like I had never done before. And it's like they bring you this ladder system that was at, uh, you know, it was at like certain height levels and stuff like that, that you had to like the runner board and stuff like that to get it to so you had to work around that and 
so we did that one and that's that's the showcase job of my career yeah you know to date for sure that one was a lot of fun um clients were great great to work with um so we were doing that and actually while that job was being um installed I get another client who's doing like a butler pantry, like on the back of their main pantry. They got nine foot ceilings. And the wife was like, we take the cabinets all the way up to the ceiling. The wife like makes a joke about, oh, I'm going to need a ladder for that one. So I throw out like this like little like cheeky line about, oh, let's put a ladder system in there. And they like give me this like weird look. And so I was like, let me show you this job. I pull up like the, the pictures of it, like while it's doing, while it's being constructed. And the guy looks at me, he goes, hell yeah. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, that's funny. He's like, let's do it. I'm like, hell yeah. See, so that's awesome. So we did that. And then uh, I was like, well, I got just a contractor for you. Um, so, uh, so I sent my contractor. I call him. I go, dude, we're doing another ladder system. So um, we do that. And then that same contractor, Troy Fallon, uh, WNY Remodeling, he uh, he's doing a new build right now, his own new build. And he's got like 12-foot ceiling. So he was like... I'm doing the ladder system of mine. So I'm up to my third one now. That's pretty sick. Yeah, That's pretty, sort of like pretty wild, creating huh? your own uh, trend almost. Yeah, here yeah, in, yeah, yeah. That's I'm like when when I want to do like a little mini like vignette in one of my showrooms at some point. And I'm like, I got this like figured out now. I'm like, let's roll with it. I'm like, because that's another thing too. Like somebody walks into the showroom and they see that and it's like, whoa, this ladder system. Like even if like their house can't do it or they have no plans of doing it, they're going to remember me because – you're not walking into another showroom and seeing a ladder system. At least right. not one that I know of. Right. You know, but yeah. so it's like having like those differences that, that can set you apart. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. And that's they're great really resume cool. writers. You know, that's, I put that, that's like one of my, uh, that's the front picture on my business card yeah. right now is that one. So that's a good idea. Like, yeah, you want something like this. Um, I think that's a great place to sort of, you know, transition to if there's one thing that you could hope you know, our viewers sort of take away from this conversation with you um, regarding creative kitchens and baths. What what would that one thing you'd want someone to remember? Give give us a shot. And I guess like what I mean by that is like um, the the showroom setting can be intimidating, I think, to a lot of people. Or they don't even want to like walk into the showroom because they assume, you know, we're going to be, you know – X amount of dollars more than a box store or something like that. And I'm like, that's not necessarily the case. You know, um, it's the, there's, there's, it, it really comes down to the, the, the individualized service of where you get the difference, you know, but as far as like product goes, like I'm right there, price point competitive with, um, I, I got, you know, entry mid high end cabinetry and, um, we're, we're right in line, you know, with all the box store stuff and, but you're going to get one-on-one -on -one attention. You yeah. Know? You're going to get someone with a soul. <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't, don't think that, you know, we're going to be two or three times more because it's not the case, you know, and is it a common uh, misconception with yeah, showrooms? Yeah. I, I've always, for years, even before, you know, creative, I, I was always trying to think of ways to, how do you, how do you pull some of that, that box store clientele that, um, I, I was I was told by one of my bosses years and years and years ago that uh, you know not everybody's a fit for everybody, and um, that was a really kind of not gratifying. I don't know, maybe not. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but like relieving. Just a, yes, almost. relieving to hear that because like you didn't feel pressure to. Here's this person that comes in, and now I got to make this work. You know, for right. that sale. You know, there's people who are going to come into a showroom that probably should be at a box store, and you're going to get box store people that probably should be at a showroom. Yeah, you know. Um, but it's about not trying to put you know the square in the peg. You I know, think, like you mentioned, having and, having different types of designers too. Like you mentioned, like yep. you guys all aren't the same fit exact. of personality. Right. You know, it's like you go into a you know you go into a barber shop. You know, everybody each barber. You know, they're all going to give you. You know, you want to fade, but you know you could get faded out differently from yeah. different different barbers you know and you know maybe maybe they both give you a good cut but guess what maybe you like you know maybe the small talk yeah, is right. better with the other one so you're going to be more prone there. to that one you guys you know? just experience this together yeah. so it's like i've said before like one of the things on our website a long time ago that i put on there was like we're an agency and like a lot of companies like it's almost like you're going to need an agency at some point so it's going to come down to results and relationship do you is it working and do you do you enjoy the process of getting it to work with that agency or, or that partner? Because it's a difficult task and people often don't 
give it the patience or time or, uh, I guess, feedback that it needs to make it work. Because regardless if you're working with us or if you're working with another company, you need to give them time and patience. But ultimately, if you're not enjoying it, just go find somebody else. Right, exactly. (laughs) You know, and that patience and the time thing, I tell people that too, like, we are patient. You know, patience is a good thing in this industry. Um, I get people who will call and they'll be like, probably not doing anything till next year. You know, would it be okay? Can we start the process now? Is it true? I'm like, no. I'm like, thank you. Like, this is right. this is good. It's the people that come in and are like, they, like, they need their kitchen yesterday. That are, That's where, I'm like, there, there's, there's a lot of decision-making that goes in here. So to like rush through it, that's where you probably run into issues more so than taking your time. And let it just organically happen, you know? Yeah. So then you're not getting all stressed out and, and everything yeah. like that, you know, be it the, whether it's, Price point, remember what I was saying earlier, people get stressed out about spending money. People get stressed out about having to make decisions. Yeah. And people get stressed out when they can't see the vision. Right. So, like, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I feel like I'm part designer, I'm part uh, teacher, and I'm part therapist. Right. You know, yeah. designer obviously speaks for itself, but the teacher part, that's where I was talking about, like, the product and price knowledge of, like, getting people, like, so they know that they're making an informed decision. Yeah. You know? And I, I never want the woulda, coulda, shouldas, you right. know, be it tomorrow or 10 years from now. And, and that could go either way. You could be like, man, could I have spent a thousand bucks more and got this and this? Or did I really need to spend that extra thousand bucks? Could I have done this instead? Right. And then this way, we, let me exhaust all those options for you. And the longer... Before we pull the trigger. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the further out we, we start the process... I can give you more of that information. But if you tell me, hey, you know, I got a contractor starting in, you know, eight weeks, I need, you know, and your cabinets are six weeks out, like we got two weeks to do this. Like we got to be like, bang, 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 you know? But if you tell me, hey, we got a year to go. Okay, well now we don't have to worry about, you know, life happening and oh man, you know, or, you know, a kid got sick or something came up at work and you got to cancel the appointment or do a reschedule, whatever happens, you know, there's a million things that can happen. So just giving the project room to breathe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, give it, don't, don't be afraid to come into the showrooms, you know, and, uh, come in early. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask was how can people reach you guys or what's the best way to sort of set up an appointment? So you can, you can call us, um, at, at either showroom and we like to start our process by coming out on site to, uh, you know, to get some room measurements and stuff like that. And then we they have them come in and then we do the design process and then have you come back in, figure out whether you want to come into Hamburg or Amherst. Uh, so you can always call us at the showroom to do that. Uh, you can go direct online on our website and our online scheduler is set right on there. Um, you can pick the designer that you want to work with right on the website and then you click on our face and then our, our schedule will come up and then you can find a time that's convenient for you. Um, we, we got a, and then Facebook, you know, Facebook's an, another big one, which you guys have been great helping us out with the, with the Facebook stuff there and the, the traffic. And that's really, really, uh, been driving up. So kudos to you guys for that stuff. That's been, been a huge help for us. Well, so I always like to say, like you said, karma earlier, we sort of positioned ourselves a couple of years ago with what we like to call karma clients. And we, we sort of aim to work with people that we know are not going to make our jobs easy, but there's, there's obviously probably other designers in the area that wouldn't make our job as easy as it is with the work that you guys do and how you appreciate it. So I appreciate you guys, you know, being as passionate and caring for the, for the customers, because I think that stuff carries a lot of weight in what we do. We sort of do our best to get a client in front of the right audience, whether that be in search or whether that be in social media or on YouTube or wherever, that's our goal. But ultimately we can do that a million times, but if the people on the other side aren't willing to approach that lead or that, that potential customer with, with the attention and, and, and passion for what you do, it, it doesn't matter what, right. what we do. Yeah. So, you know, it uh, goes both ways. I'd say walk in too. Obviously you can always walk in to either show them at any time. Um, we, we operate, you know, appointment, you know, based, we try to as best we can, you know, as far as, you know, follow-ups and stuff like that, but the door's always open to walk in and at least, you know, say hi and walk around, get, you know, some ideas on, on yeah. what you want to do. So yeah, walk in, call website, Facebook are all, are all great avenues for awesome. that. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Last question here. Uh, what's next for, for you and for the team? What, what would, what would it look like in the next year, two, three, four years? Let's get a third location, huh? All right. <laughs> Love it. Right. Who's, we'll see where, where that goes, but yeah, man, let's, why, let's, let's dream big and keep it, keep it rolling.
Awesome. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I guess that's that's the that's the big thing. The other big thing that's always coming up for that's not too far away is the that Hamburg Home Show. Come see us uh, at the fairgrounds. We Good got, call. We got uh, front billing there. Basically, we got uh, when you walk into the front doors, we're, we're grandfather. We're the very first front corner aisle, so nice. you can't you can't, can't miss you can't em. miss us. So be sure to come check them out. You know, you you heard them. It's easy to reach them. Stop in the showroom, introduce yourself, and uh, give them a shot. Like you said. That's it. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend about our show here. And uh, if you or someone you know has a business and you want to stop in and and tell your tale, we'd love to hear it. So thanks again, Jim. Uh, Jeremy, thank you. This was great. Awesome. Appreciate it. We'll see it. I would do a pregame dump. I called it like taking a dump. But... Those little taglines. So the pregame dump stuff. and then the postgame <laughs> wrap up. So I was doing like three a week and nice. I got yeah. six of them. What? Six boys. Holy shit. But, so I have three and my girlfriend's got three. Oh, okay. So we're like Brady Bunch combined. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. cool. Oh my God. That is like the Brady yeah. Bunch. That That's a fucking reality it's show wild. right there. It's wild. All right. And I'm good over here. Get a little sip first. Skip sipski. Oh yeah. All right. Um, how's my posture? Am I sitting up straight? All right. That's all right. We'll do another clap.